outstanding conditions, the best light, you even nailed the composition, but all this is worthless if your photograph doesn't say anything. Without a compelling story, your photograph is not more than just a capture. In this video, I will show you two different methods of bringing stories into your photographs, what I use all the time. Hi my friends, very nice to see you. It's quite interesting. You know, I give workshops about landscape photography, about how to find compositions, how to master them, how to bring a photograph to art and all this stuff. And what I see always and always again, where really even experienced photographers seem to struggle most is to implant a story into their image. Having the skill to tell a story with your photos can really bring your photography to the next level. So what I often see is that photographers think about the composition, about light and yeah, even maybe about the right timing and then they are thinking about how to bring a story into their composition. But my friends, it can't work in that way because the job of a composition is simply to support the story. So if you just build up a composition that is beautiful, you will just get a capture that is beautiful. But I mean, don't get me wrong here, this is absolutely okay if you want to get a remember shot from your mountain holidays maybe. But if you want to get a masterpiece instead, a fine art photograph, it is not possible to implant a story. And this is the reason why so many photographers struggle, because it's simply not possible. And the trick is to do it in the opposite way. So first of all, before we even get out our camera of our, of, from our bag, we look for a story. We don't look for a composition, we look for a story. And when we can't find a story, there is no reason to build up a composition. And again, we are talking about artistry landscape photography, not about remember shots, not about travel photography or proof photos that you have been there or something like that. And in fine art photography, if there is no story, there is no reason to build up a composition. The job of the composition is to support the story or even to tell it. So the question is, how can we find a story out in the field? So how can we find a story? Well, generally there are two different methods that work for me. The first method is what I call the analytic way. If I decide for the first method, I will get out a photograph that expresses anything. So if I want to get a photograph like that, I simply decide for a base element of my composition in the first step. Now let me show you an example here. I hiked up this mountain here, what was a hike of around two hours or something like that. And with each step I did, I knew already that I want to get this mountain here into my frame. This was the base character of my story. All I had to do was to build a story around this mountain. I was absolutely tired on that day, as I haven't slept all too much the night before. So I wanted to tell this story of I'm staying here overnight or something like that. And it looks like this rock here in the foreground could be a nice billow or something like that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a calm kind of good night scene in the mountains. And this foreground definitely adds to this story as it conveys this kind of restful feeling to this image. For an expressionistic photograph like this, it is quite simple to find a story, to be honest. Already the weather conditions could make the story. In this image here, I used the golden light of the sunset, what adds to this story. But also fog, mist, clouds can all tell a story. Light spots in the landscape, a light ray breaking through the clouds, even a quiet reflection on the surface of, of a lake or something like that, can tell a fantastic story. Also floating water is an amazing storyteller as well. So we can use all these things as a base element of our story. And then I try to tell a story around these elements with using other elements in my composition which support my story. So the low sun in this image is not enough to tell a story about a sunset. The story is supported by these light spots in the landscape, the glowing tops of these bushes catching the light in a fantastic way and by the glowing road here at the right hand side as well. 
but my base element doesn't necessarily need to be a single character. Also a contrast between two characters could be the base element for my story. Well, let me show you an example here. I've been out at a really fantastic place here in our mountains in Austria and I photographed mountains with low clouds, really fantastic photographs. And beside this amazing mountain landscape, I got also attracted by this chapel here with this tree. And as a tree is known as a symbol of life and a chapel or also a church could be understood as a place for deceased people. Yeah, I mean, not really, but there is any kind of, um, of association. And I wanted to tell the story of exactly this contrast between life and death. But this image here doesn't really work, to be honest. It doesn't tell the story. It is just a capture. So what I've done is the weather always changed on, the, on this day between sunshine and rain. And I simply wanted to bring this contrast between sunshine and rain into my image to emphasize my story of the contrast between life and death. And finally, I got out this image here. Now, using this trail up here also conveys a bit this feeling of, yeah, you know, <laughs> always stick to the right path and get illuminated or something like that. I would not say that this is a spiritual image. Yeah, it's just a contrast between good and bad, maybe. And I found this story only because I saw this contrast between the chapel and the tree. And finally, I have to say, I'm quite happy with this image. So there is an analytic way of how you can find the story. And based on that, you can build up your composition. This can, can lead into really fantastic photographs. Also artistry photographs are possible with this. But for the really, really strong image, masterpieces if you want, my process looks a tiny bit different. But before I tell you more about that, my friends, if you like this video, please consider to give me a thumb up. It helps me, it helps the algorithm, it helps other photographers out there to find this video better on YouTube. So thank you therefore. Well, now we know how to find a story with an analytic approach, but for my strongest image, I'm not interested in analytic things. I'm even not interested in reality. I'm, I'm much more interested in surrealistic stories. And yeah, we can't simply find surrealistic stories in an analytic way. We have even to be maybe a tiny bit crazy or something like that to find surrealistic stories in a realistic world. So what I do is, and <laughs> this, this might sound weird, but what I do is I don't look for stories. I just try to be open. I get into a kind of receiving mode or something like that. So it is like you would look into the sky and yeah, you, you, you just see clouds. And if you do this for a while, you stop to think in an analytic way and suddenly you don't see clouds anymore. You see more a dragon, a bear, a fish or something like that. So let me give you an example. I got this image here some weeks ago and I even flopped on that day to be honest, but I didn't show you this photograph. And the reason that was simply, yeah, uh, there were so many compositions out there. Really, I, I was surrounded 360 degree, one story beside the other. And you know, I never make any secrets on my videos. I just thought I have already enough stuff for the video and I thought it's maybe better to use the rest of the time to find more compositions before the fog goes away. And oh man, this was such a right decision. I showed you lots of additional photographs in my video already some weeks ago, accepted by this one and, and yeah, I thought, this photograph deserves an own video maybe this year. So uh, which story can we see on this photograph? The image title is self-confidence. Yeah, I mean, it is all about this tree here in the center, which is different to the others as it has golden hair. Yeah, I mean, the foliage, of course. I have to be careful what I'm seeing here that I see. If from people here, what I'm seeing here could be that they would have a nice jacket for me. But yeah, I can differ between reality and abstract stories. Everything good here. So I see this birch tree here with this golden foliage and at the left hand side, I can see a more shy birch tree hiding like a, a young child behind his mother or something like that. And at the right hand side, we see maybe two youth birches and they are all looking at this one birch tree that is different with its golden hair. But this one is self-confident. It doesn't hide behind its mother or something like that. I simply saw the story of self-confidence. I didn't think about the image title already when I was out in the field, to be honest. And yeah, there was simply not enough time there for the, to think about words and something like that. I just saw this story and then I've built up the composition. I waited for the right amount of fog in the distance, but always changed a bit. And finally, I took the exposure. You know, this image is saying something and the story behind it makes it to a much stronger image than just a capture of trees in the fog. 
And also this image here tells a quite fantastic surrealistic story. The image title is And There Was Light. And in this case, I built up the composition already hours before where I didn't see the final story to be honest. At least not that obvious one. I mean, I knew that I would need a light spot back there and I waited for hours therefore. But anyway, I felt this story of hoping for the light already when I built up the composition first time. Thirsty is also a good example. I've been out for a walk with my wife where I suddenly saw the story of a thirsty tree at a dried out brook. I just waited for some weeks yeah, to get the autumn leaves on point and then I returned there to take the shot. I knew the story here already before I returned there with my camera. So it is not possible to implant a story to your composition, look for stories instead. Or let's say, stay open for stories instead. Yeah, I think this really nails it. Stay open for stories. And very important, don't get frustrated when you can't find a story. It doesn't work with violence. We simply have to accept that we don't always find stories. I also don't always find stories. Comes time, comes stories. And it is really like that I get into a kind of receiving mode. It could be that I'm walking for hours in the nature and I can't see any story, especially when there are other people around me or when I'm talking with another person while I'm walking. Uh, then I'm, I'm too much grounded in reality maybe, something like that. But when I'm alone for a while or maybe with another photographer who also tries to get into this kind of receiving mode, suddenly I get totally open. And in the best case, I really see one story beside another as it happened some weeks ago in this video here. My friends, I hope this video was useful. Give me a thumb up if you liked this video. And thank you so much for watching. See you next Saturday. Bye. I'm the landscape you need to see. You are the artist I'll never be.